I don't know about you. Y'all ready? Are y'all ready to to get some shit started, man? Y'all ready for some live videos, bro? Y'all make sure y'all say what's up to YouTube. Even though y'all are on YouTube, this is gonna be posted. Hello? Everybody that's watching on live with us, big shout out. And just to let you know, man, we going live on YouTube, man. We live on YouTube right now. And the best way for you to stay tuned to all our lives <laughs> is by doing one of the following, man. You can go down to the link. Why? I got the Discord link up there. And you click on the Discord link, man. We got a whole community over on Discord, man. We just be chilling. We be laid back. We be talking shit. We be talking about GNEs. GNEs ain't working. They ain't working, y'all. Are the Bikini Bottom citizens the result of nuclear radiation? Who is Pearl's mother? What Me? is the Krabby Patty secret? With Fundrise, the same kind of real estate investments that have powered the world. These are by far the three biggest questions in the show SpongeBob SquarePants. And today I'm going to be answering all three of them and more with just one theory. Ugh. Get ready for the darkest SpongeBob conspiracy you'll ever see. This is the Evolution Theory. We're back with another SpongeBob conspiracy. Guess I'm the SpongeBob guy now. That's that's all I make. You guys <laughs> sure love these SpongeBob theories. Alex Bale out with another video. The makers of SpongeBob. Boy, I know you ain't getting. It. Come on, boy. This nigga look like um, that nigga off a of Better Call Saul. His brother and shit. No, boy. I'm finna get any shit. Ex cop looking ass boy. I'm finna get any shit. This nigga. Was an ex-cop. This nigga was so scared of the government. This nigga put on full hat on. No, boy. This nigga just went. No, this nigga went to Walmart. They kicked him out. Couldn't buy his hat. This nigga made one. Ugly ass, boy. Finna get on your shit, boy. Interfere. Put in their own message. To brainwash you, people. Squilliam sends the doctor in. He's not really a doctor. He's just trying to infiltrate. That little round thing on No, nigga. That's you, ugly ass, boy. Head there. Oh, my God. Thank God for Alex Bale. Look at that. He's helping... Me prove my point. You know what? That is awesome. Maybe some of you what? love them a little too much. You know, I got <laughs> other videos, right? I, I, I make films and stuff too. Anyone want to watch those? Anyways, no, boy, by far the most popular SpongeBob theory out there is the Bikini Atoll nuclear radiation theory. It's pretty simple. It's been confirmed that Bikini Bottom is actually beneath a real life place called Bikini Atoll. From 1946 to 1958, the United States did nuclear tests there, devastating the area and leaving it radioactive even to this day. The theory Damn. states that the reason why the citizens of Bikini Bottom can talk and have formed advanced societies is because of mutations caused by these nuclear tests. Damn. And that's about the whole theory. Even though there's tons and tons of videos about it, none of them actually go in depth with it or really look through the show for evidence. But y'all know that if Alex Bale is making a theory on it, then it's not going to be some baby surface level Stop analysis. Up. I will Stop watch up, every single episode of Spongebob. I will read every page of the goddamn Wikipedia. If I'm making a theory on it, then you guys know it's going to be good. And once I really started looking into I like the confidence though. He said, bro, if I'm making a theory on it, <laughs> you know it's gotta be good, man. I like, the, I like that confidence. To this theory, I realize that there is so much more here than anyone thinks. Get ready, because today we're going to be solving the biggest mysteries in the history of SpongeBob SquarePants and changing the way you look at the entire show. So without further ado, let's begin the theory. Bikini Atoll In order theory. to find out whether the Bikini Atoll theory is true, we first have to determine whether fish talking and being so intelligent is unique to Bikini Bottom, or if that's just the way the SpongeBob universe works. I know he's gonna bring up something about dolphins. Like, I really have a feeling that he's gonna bring up something about dolphins. You know, it could just be that all animals in this world are able to talk, and that's completely normal because at the end of the day, SpongeBob is still just a cartoon. Well, if we take a look at Season 10, Episode 10, Feral Friends, we get a bit of a hint about how the SpongeBob world works. In this episode, a green moon appears and transforms all the characters into less cartoony, real-life versions of themselves. Look at that. <laughs> Just like in real life, they can't talk and end up trying to eat each other. The French narrator is watching all this unfold, and he says this very important line. I have been monitoring the behavior of the green moon all day. It is called Neptune's moon. Every 100 years, it de-evolves everyone in Bikini Bottom into primal fish. Every 100 years, it de-evolves everyone in Bikini Bottom into primal fish. So this implies that the characters in Bikini Bottom are more evolved and were once like these primal fish. But this doesn't prove that the evolution- 
Larry the Lobster looks sad as hell, bro. That simple ass face that he had. Lucian only exists in Bikini Bottom. It could still be a worldwide phenomenon. Remember that bonus DVD clip I found in my television theory? It was about humans studying fish in Bikini Bottom because of their intelligence. Land-loving scientists have tried to learn the secrets of intelligence. Their studies led them to the sea, where the citizens of one undersea colony demonstrated a genius so enormous, the scientists felt compelled to record their actions for use in teaching mankind how to live better. This makes it sound an okay. awful lot like the fish in Bikini Bottom actually are uniquely evolved, and it's not some worldwide phase. Then, in the SpongeBob 20-year anniversary special, SpongeBob's Big Birthday Blowout, we get a major piece of evidence for this theory. SpongeBob and Patrick take a tour of the surface the world fuck? and eventually go to a fish store and see some very realistic less evolved fish damn that's dory ain't it big fat forehead ass i'm finna get on used to damn them lips look nice <laughs> hey them, them lips was on that category big butt brazilians that's yeah sexy lip fish ass i'm finna get on you see i don't know whether the joan or you i asked you on a date nasty fish ass boy <laughs> look what the fuck sexy ass fish boy that's how you got that damn knot on your head somebody Boop! And then and, and they had their way with that fish. What kind of monsters would want to keep fish folk in jail like this? They're so beautiful. They can't talk back to SpongeBob and Patrick, and they're actually able to swim freely through the water instead of being affected by gravity. Damn. They are clearly showing. Bitch, you look like shark tail. Yes, that both evolved and primitive fish exist in this universe at the same time. Now, sometimes we've seen Bikini Bottom characters represented as realistic fish like this, but only when they're out of water, never while they're still in water like these fish. We even see this again in the beginning of the third SpongeBob movie, Sponge on the Run. The movie opens with a coral reef full of these realistic primal fish, but eventually we get to Bikini Bottom where the more evolved fish live. So there you go, direct proof that the citizens of Bikini Bottom are uniquely evolved. This is a very very deliberate world building choice for the creators to make. So I guess that kind of <laughs> confirms the Bikini Atoll theory. Theory confirmed! We did it! Woo! Well, let's hold on for a second. As much as I'd love to call this theory complete, there's actually one major piece of evidence that gives me some resistance. Something I've never seen anyone else bring up when talking about this theory. Prehistoric Bikini Bottom. Oh, We've seen good. episodes like UGG or SB129 that show Bikini Bottom millions of years in the past, but we still see evolved versions of Spongebob and- <laughs> Hey, that's where that meme came from, bro. I love that meme of prehistoric Spongebob. That shit is hilarious, y'all. Patrick. Sure, they may not be super intelligent or advanced, but they're still clearly way more evolved than the primitive realistic versions we see in Feral okay. Friends or in the Fish Store. So, how are we seeing these evolutions millions of years before the Bikini Atoll tests? Well, unfortunately, I think the only conclusion is that the Bikini Atoll theory just is it true? I mean, clearly something has caused Bikini Bottom citizens to be uniquely evolved, there's no denying that. But whatever caused it took place millions of years ago and couldn't have been the Bikini Atoll nuclear tests. Then, what really caused the evolution? In the entire show, the only thing we've seen that directly affects the evolution of characters is the Green Moon and Feral Friends. <laughs> Except the French narrator specifically calls it Neptune's Moon. It is called Neptune's Moon. Named after the ruler of the Seven Seas, King Neptune. Okay. King Neptune is a character who's been around since the beginning of the sea. He's a character who the Bikini Bottom citizens view as their god. And he's a character who has the ability to change fish into other forms. What the? King Neptune uh -huh. used his magic to turn the fish of the sea into more evolved subjects for him to rule over. He's the one who's been behind it all this time. Now, uh, I could spend this okay. entire video talking about King Neptune and his weird continuity and contradictions in the show, but I'll save that for another theory. What I'd much rather talk about are the implications of having evolved and primitive fish coexisting in the sea. Now, we know that this evolution isn't specific to just Bikini Bottom. We've seen different cities and places far across the ocean that still have talking fish. Which makes sense because the marine life in Bikini Bottom has evolved to resemble humans. What the fuck? Oh, look at this nigga cargo pants, bro. <laughs> look at this dude. Nah, man. Hey, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, though. At the same time, bro, I honestly think so, bro. Um, now, I, the reason why I like Alex is because when he breaks down a theory, he breaks down that fucking theory, bro. Like, he breaks it down to shit that you, you had watched the episode over and over, and then you never had noticed that part of the episode. AJ, no. No. 
Uh-uh. Put it down. There you go. Thank you. But now I have an interesting question for you. What is the relationship between evolved fish and primitive unevolved fish? Well, they probably just peacefully coexist in the sea without bothering each other. You know, just like real life humans and animals. Wait a second. <laughs> In Season 3, Episode 10, the Krusty Krab training video, there is this hilarious, absurd moment when they're talking about Mr. Krabs. After the war, Krabs stayed secluded in a deep depression that seemed endless. Like, what war happened in Bikini Bottom? They right. just tell us this and then completely drop it. But with this new context, is it possible that Krabs fought in a war against these primitive, wild fish of the sea? I mean, let's remember in Feral Friends, some of those de-evolved fish were massive compared to the evolved fish, and they immediately started attacking each other. Ah, uh, the battle for the survival of the fittest rages on in the animal kingdom. Damn. So yeah, in order for the Bikini Bottom- <laughs> Them niggas was fighting over bills and said, I, you could have mine citizens to survive and expand, they would probably break Vietnam. into some kind of war. And from the sounds of it, this war must have been pretty brutal to put Mr. Krabs into such a deep depression. I mean, nigga, any war is fucking brutal. Have you been? Have you seen some? But I'm getting ahead of myself. Is there actually any evidence that proves the war Mr. Krabs fought in was specifically this evolutionary war? Well, through the few flashbacks we get, we know that Mr. Krabs served in the Navy. And yes, they were sailing ships on an ocean, even though they're already <laughs> underwater. This is actually a real life phenomenon where certain parts of the sea can have a higher level of salinity and it looks like an underwater ocean. Shout out Miss Parks, my high school marine biology teacher. We also know from maps of Bikini Bottom that the town is surrounded by this underwater ocean. So that places Mr. Krabs war outside of Bikini Bottom where this evolutionary war would have to take place. Then if we took a look at Mr. Krabs' home, we see it is full of memorabilia from his past days in the Navy. But hidden within here is something that will absolutely blow your mind and answer one of the biggest questions in the show. Hanging there on his wall, it, it was a deal though. <laughs> Hey, but would it be fucked up? Uh, hanging on this wall is a vibrator. Like, what the f- Whoa! <laughs> Mr. Krabs is a freak. He's the freak of the sea. Stupid ass, bro. I've been like, I've been like, I've been like, bro, that's some mind-blown shit right there. It's a picture of a massive whale next to a ship. You don't think that could be... No, it can't be. Pearl's mother? Mm. Pearl is Mr. Krabs' whale daughter. The show never really explains how a crab can be the father of a whale, but most people just assume she was adopted. People have been speculating about who Pearl's biological mother is for years, and I think we finally just found our answer. We see two photos of this whale on a ship in Season 3, Episode 9, just one episode before we find out Mr. Krabs fought in a war. Since this is among all of Mr. Krabs' Navy stuff, I think we can assume that this is something he encountered and not just some random picture of a whale on a ship above the ocean. The whale is massive massive compared to the ship. We've seen adult whales in Bikini Bottom before, but they are nothing compared to the size of this whale. This has a much closer resemblance to Pearl when she de-evolved in Feral Friends and became massive. So this has to be an unevolved primitive whale, and the picture clearly shows them fighting. Not only does this prove that there was a war between evolved and primitive fish, but Mr. Krabs definitely fought in it. But you know what's, you know what's interesting, oh, but I was just getting ready to say, I was just going to say it was interesting. What if uh, King Midas, I mean, uh, King Neptune, uh, uh, he turned all the damn uh, sea creatures into um, evolved forms just so that way, just so that way that they would get along better and be able to talk shit out. I don't know. I was going to say that, but then again, I was thinking like, well, then there was primitive fish, but then King Neptune was around then. I, I don't know. We'll see where he goes with this. Right, we'll just stop with me and we'll just see where he goes. But this also implies something very dark. Mr. Krabs killed Pearl's mother. Damn! Damn that guy. The only gone. direct reference we get in the show to Pearl's mother is one of Mr. Krabs' many sayings, Mother of Pearl. <laughs> Mother of Pearl! Mother of Pearl! Holy Mother of Pearl! He uses it in places something like Holy Crap or Dear God, only saying it when something truly shocking or terrible happens. Because he knows the terrible thing that happened to Pearl's mother. Why did Mr. Krabs go into such a deep depression after the war? Because he's haunted by what he's done. And the smoking harpoon to prove it is right there on his wall. So, that leaves us with an important Damn. question. 
Why did he adopt Pearl? After he killed her mother, he probably realized she had an infant daughter who had the evolutionary genes. Instead of leaving her to die, he adopted her as his own, all while keeping the dark secret that he was responsible for her mother's death. Woo! Childhood ruined yet? Well, don't worry, there's still time for this theory to get even worse. Now's your chance to remove yourself before things get really dark. Alright, the part where things get really dark, look at ass, okay. Let's see, let's see. He did Still regret here? It. Okay, so here's a fun question. What's the deal with all the pets in Bikini Bottom? How come most fish are basically humans, but a snail or a worm acts like a pet? Well, just like humans have domesticated wild animals, it should be no surprise that evolved fish have domesticated primitive fish as pets. Unlike the massive primitive fish that the Bikini Bottom citizens had to go to war with, there's also smaller primitive fish like jellyfish, snails, spirit worms, seahorses, and clams that the Bikini Bottom citizens were able to form a symbiotic relationship with. Aww, and I thought you said this was gonna be the dark part, Alex. They're living peacefully together. That's nice. Okay, okay, you got me. Where do the citizens of Bikini Bottom get their food? I mean, sure, some of it is plant-based, but there sure does seem to be an awful lot of meat-based food under the sea. I think you know where I'm going with this. The Bikini Bottom citizens eat primitive fish. Haha, <laughs> it's not cannibalism if they're less evolved than you, right? There's no moral dilemma there. No, nah, that is, bro. That's like eating a, 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 a caveman, or that's like going to uh, somewhere or the remote parts of the world finding a, a tribe and saying hmm we're gonna cook some uh lo lost children burgers or some shit no that ain't good bro in season 3 episode 13 we see direct proof of this when the characters go fishing for primitive clams this is something completely normal in this world and then there's the chum bucket which sells chum 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 is literally just ground up fish the show isn't even hiding this now, we don't really see too much of the meat harvesting side of Bikini Bottom, and I'm not surprised they're keeping it on the DL, you know, with the whole cannibalism thing, but there is one secret to making food that is kept more secret than anything in Bikini Bottom. The best kept secret in the entire show. You already know what I'm gonna say. The Krabby Patty secret formula. Uh, that got real crap. Throughout the show, there's been lots of contradictory evidence about the Krabby Patty secret formula. In season four, episode seven, Mr. Krabs says it's an old family recipe. Your mother knows the Krabby Patty formula? Of course she does. It's an old Krabs family recipe. But in season five, episode one, apparently Mr. Krabs discovered it on his own by accidentally mixing random ingredients together. <laughs> That shit dropped in there like Chemical X. And here's another thing. Get your little freaky ass while you see this man lick it, bro. <laughs> Hold on, bro. Go, let, let me go back and stick it, bro. bro. Look, look at this man lick it. Discovered it on his own by accidentally mixing random ingredients together. Look at him. That boy was on it. <laughs> I discovered the Every girl's dream look at this. Sometimes it's a secret formula, sometimes it's a book, sometimes it's a secret sauce, and any glimpse we get at the formula is just random nonsense. There is a ton of contradictory evidence out there, but I think this might all be intentional. In order to throw people off, Mr. Krabs has spread misinformation about the Krabby Patty formula. In fact, he's already done this in Season 3, Episode 18, by hiding a fake formula for Plankton to find that says he's the secret ingredient. Mixed together with the most important ingredient of all... Four heaping pounds of freshly ground <laughs> And the contradictions aren't just inside the show. Even one of the SpongeBob oh, crew members God. once said that Krabby Patties are vegetarian and contain no meat. But I've always been a little suspicious about what the creators say. They've also said that they're not allowed to show fish as food. Except they clearly do with chum, clam fishing, and all the many, many gags where fish turn into food. It's almost right. like they're not allowed by Nickelodeon to publicly acknowledge this because that could create a controversy, but they could still sneak this dark secret into the show. So what is the true secret ingredient? Where does the meat really come from? It's strange, we never really see Mr. Krabs get the meat delivered, or at least go out himself to get it. It's almost like he has all the meat he needs stockpiled somewhere. Hmm, what primitive meat can Mr. Krabs have access to? Maybe he's been holding onto something from the war. Hmm, what- No! That's- You are no, I don't- I refuse to believe that. I refuse to believe that he's holding on to Pearl's mother and slowly chopping and slicing and dicing, and these are whale burgers. 
Well done. Oh, I, no, hell no. I refuse to believe that. What could Mr. Krabs have killed during the war that he doesn't want anyone to find out about? Something big enough to supply him with meat for years without needing more. Hmm, what could that be? You really gonna make me say it? Mr. Krabs is using Pearl's dead mother's carcass to make Krabby Patties. Woo! We did it! Yeah, we solved the mystery! We did it! <laughs> I'm so glad. Season 1, Episode 15, Sleepy Time. Mr. Krabs has a dream that he's on a boat fishing for a massive dollar. This is his memory of killing Pearl's mother. Except now, all he sees her as is money. And wow. take a guess what name he calls the dollar. What you doing, Mr. Krabs? Hey! Picking Neptune's bucket! What are you talking about? I'm talking about cold, hard, flipping cash! It's the mighty Moby Dollar! Moby Dollar. A direct reference to Moby Dick. A story about hunting a whale. Are you kidding me? And that is the evolution theory. I warned you guys this would be a dark one. The Bikini Atoll theory, King Neptune, Pearl's mother, the Krabby Patty formula, we hit everything in this theory. Even wow. if you don't agree with all of it, you gotta admit a lot of this makes sense. Eugene Krabs' aspirations for money and greed have caused him to do terrible, terrible things. At least his love for Pearl seems to be real, so maybe there's some small amount- What love? What love? Boy, you killed- yeah, 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 her mama, your off her mama, and then you're serving burgers of her. I'm sure she's probably ate a few or two or three. Uh, uh, come on, bro. What love? That ain't love. The hell's wrong with you? Amount of good in him. And even though Pearl's mother probably provides tons of meat, eventually he's gonna run out and he'll have to face what he's done. Well, unless, of course, there's another whale he has access to. <gasps> Nope. Nope. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Mr. Krabs wouldn't do that. He loves Pearl. He's not just raising her for Krabby Patty meats. Even Mr. Krabs isn't that much of a monster. From every side I've ever seen to the sweetest sound I've heard, I'd gladly give up everything for all the money that I've earned. What? Huh. Well, already then, that's the end of that theory. Just gonna end it here before there's any more dark plot twists. You guys have been insanely supportive with these SpongeBob theories, so I guess I have to make more. I've been your host, Alex Bale. Thanks for watching. That's crazy. <sighs> Damn. Time to go take a shit, licking ass, boy. <laughs> what this nigga got? Meatballs in there? What this nigga got in his fridge? Well, I see some motherfucking meatball straws. Uh, shit, this nigga. <laughs> this nigga was like, whoo, I'm glad to get this shit down. I'm finna go take a shit. <laughs> Look at him. He's like, man, let me, what am I, what I'm gonna eat before I, this nigga got broccoli, cauliflower, and shit. This nigga got fish sticks. Yeah, my boy, my boy Alex built like he made he made the computer that I'm. Uh, uh yeah. Hey, no just want to let you know Alex. that I uh, I think I'm gonna take a break from the SpongeBob videos for a little bit. Uh uh, no boy. Uh, it, it's not you. I mean, I mean the videos are great. People people love them. It's just I think I want to go back to making actual films for a bit. Nope. This is some meat canyon shit right here. Uh, oh, okay then. Uh, thanks for everything. I guess I'll just, I'll just see you around. Yeah, you turn your ass around. You better run, you better run, nigga. Run! When I found that's how you be after you eat too many White Castle or Crystal Burgers. That's how you be on the toilet. Ah, shit. Dude, time. And you be sweating it too. Hold, both hands gripping the side of the... <laughs> that's, that's violent. That's a violent shit. You were unnoticed and unloved. But now you have millions of... Views. You have sponsors. Why would you forsake them? 
I just, you know, I don't, I don't want to really make these videos forever. You know, I don't want to be known as the, the SpongeBob guy. Uh, you are <laughs> <laughs> My boy, you really think they will care about your little films? I am your muse. I, like I have given you the gift of knowledge. If you wish to go back to anonymity, then be my guest. But I know who you really are. Or gave that man a Krabby Patty formula. <laughs> I don't know if that nigga's scary or tired, but the shit. But I hope you get some sleep, but uh, try NyQuil. Okay, y'all, that's the video for for this episode right now, man. SpongeBob Conspiracy is is on point. Some of the best, well put together conspiracies that I've seen on YouTube. And even though I do understand him, he doesn't want to get caught up in being the SpongeBob guy. But you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. There's nothing wrong with people loving you for something and then champion how they met you. That's like if people came up to me and been like, oh, he's a he's the reaction guy. He does reaction YouTube videos. I'm like, that is what it is. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with that. And I do understand him wanting to transition, so I get that. Yeah, that does sound like Mr. Krabs. That does sound like Mr. Krabs. But I do understand. I do get him wanting to transition. So I'm going to definitely support my boy. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to definitely support him, and I'm going to definitely check Check out some of his um his other things, man. But y'all, hey, look, look. Make sure that y'all hit that like button and go down below if you want to see more SpongeBob conspiracy episodes from your boy. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you go down there and make sure you hit that like button and then drop it in the comments and let your boy know that you want to see it, man. All right.